So, Holly, I start with you. One, why do you believe that your generation is going to vote Democratic, if at all, in this election? Why? That's an easy question. I think Vice President Harris and the Democratic Party represent a lot of the values of young Americans. We really just want a future in which we have a decently well economy, where we have our rights to us, such as reproductive rights, and in which climate action is being taken care of so that future generations can enjoy our wonderful planet for many generations to come, and one in which things like gun violence is not a problem for us so that we can go out to school and be safe in our own communities. And you think that gets them to the polls more than the economy for the jobs that their degree may or may not afford them, what is being done with their debt, what the chances that they'll ever have to buy a home like the one their parents have? I think so, especially because, you know, this election is so much more about than just simply issues, right? It's about the values of what this administration will represent to young Americans, right? We care about democracy. We care about um, elections, fair elections, and the, the ability for us to vote and our systems to be one in which we don't let let people like Donald Trump get away with um, the crimes that he's committed. Mm. And I think a lot of young Americans have that moral clarity to be able to see which party is doing what is right for them. You know, Will, it's an interesting phrase uh, that your colleague uses um, of what you fear, what you're against, what you want to correct. Uh, that is certainly motivation on the right as well. Is that echoed in your generation? Do people who are thinking about either voting for former President Trump or consider themselves conservative or Republicans, do you see them being motivated by what they want to stop, what they are against? I, I don't for the most part, Chris, and thank you for having me on. I, I was raised in a Democrat household. My parents voted for Obama both elections. I went into college a liberal, and as a first-generation immigrant, by all the statistics, I should be president of college Democrats, not college Republicans. But one thing rang true after the Trump presidency, and that was the economy is doing terrible. And I think polling, at least in the beginning for you know, Vice President Harris and for President Biden, is starting to show that. In Pennsylvania, our, our NPR, or sorry, excuse me, NYT and Siena polls are showing a 28-point swing in the 18 to 29 voter demographic. I, I think the social issues are obviously important to our generation that leans liberal, but in an economy where we're not going to be able to afford a home and groceries are up 25 percent and mm -hmm. gas is up over 50 percent, these are just things that matter more to us. We're trying to start families. We're trying to have the American dream passed down to us, and we don't see that future. You know, it's easy. You see the graph that we have on the screen right now that has you guys oversampled Democratic. Now, the question becomes why. Will, I'll start with you. Why do you believe uh, Gen Z oversamples Democratic? Do you think it's what you started with, which is that uh, when you're young, you're left? What's the old expression? If you're young and not a Democrat, you have no heart. If you're old and not a Republican, you have no head. Uh, what is... Uh, your take on that. Do you believe that the oversampling will to the left is because uh, they're just young people, or do you think there's something that's grabbing them? I think you're exactly right, Chris. There's a lot of young, you know, people in college, people not in college that have ideas about how they want to live their lives, how they want to approach the world. And when we're younger, we're not turned off by you know, taxes, and we're not turned off by a job market and the, the evils of the world. And so we come at life from a very utopian point of view. We think we can hand out cash to, to those that are less fortunate than us. We think we can bring in everybody across our border and that we're not going to have repercussions. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that's just not true. You know, you, you leave college and you join the workforce and you realize that there are bills to pay and we, we can't approach everything in life with a handout. And so I think you're right. Young, you know, Gen Z students, non-students are very, very loving and they want to help people. And so they trend liberal. And then when they get out into the market and they can't afford a home, it's like, oh, wow, mm. maybe I probably shouldn't have voted well, for Biden. You certainly have been loved up, Sahali. I know that because you've got great parents. Uh, and I know because I'm one of them. And we have loved you guys up the way that we wanted to be loved up when we were young latchkey kids. So, Sahali, when you look at this election, what do you anticipate uh, among your generation of first-time voter, voters in most cases? Do you believe that we're going to see uh, a, a record? Do you think we're going to see overperformance? Or do you think this is an election that a lot of people are turned off by and will stay home? 
I think we will see record turnout. And I think that the past is just a great indicator of the future. We've seen record turnout in uh, 2020 and 2022 mm -hmm. midterms as well. And I think that youth will be um, the factor that really decides who wins the election. We make up more than half the electorate or just about half the electorate. And I think that plays a really, really big role in who wins um, in this November. And so I think the youth vote, like what both campaigns are trying to do to capture our vote is going to make a really, really big difference in who wins the White House. Hey, thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget, click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.